and movies we can learn from The Handmaiden today uh, with George Kaysen and me here on Think Tech. I'm Jay Fidel. We're going to talk about a movie that we cannot discuss in great detail because this, may I say, this pornography. So, you know, viewer discretion advised. Yes. Right? Yes. George, let's take the first part of the show and you can do your monologue, if you will, okay. your Jay Leno uh, monologue about how this thing goes. Okay. Suffice to say, it's a, it's a long movie. Yeah. It's a beautiful movie. Yes. Production values are off the off the charts. Sure. And the quality of the, there's the poster for it. Yeah. Uh, and the people are absolutely beautiful. The women, oh God. Uh, yeah. Anyway, so George, tell us what's going on here in the hand. What is a handmaiden? Handmaiden is like a servant that specifically is like a, a valet for a woman, you know, like takes care of all the, 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 the woman's needs, right? And that's- And where and when did this movie take place? 1930s, Japanese occupied Korea. That's where it took place. And it's on this mansion, this beautiful mansion that was filmed in different places in Japan and in, and in Korea. And it's, uh, yeah, it's in the 19th. Beautiful is the word. I mean, this is the most extraordinary mansion you ever saw. Yes. It yeah. looks like something out of Victorian England. Yeah. Um, the whole thing is, is, is in, in, internal. It's got wood, oak yeah. all over the place, the floors, the walls, the ceilings. You've got fantastic uh, chandeliers and bookcases and furniture. It's uh, it's like you say, my like, God, I didn't think a place like this exists in the world, much less, um, you know, in was it Korea, I guess, is where it happens uh, in 1930s. It's amazing. And and these people had had pretty much played ball with the Japanese when they took over Korea. And that's where they were given this, uh, you know, affluence. Well, they, they, they helped. The guy, the uncle, yeah, uh, Kouchi is his name. Yeah, cool. um, they helped the Japanese um, uh, uh, occupy Korea. Kozuki, yeah, yeah, Koz Kozuki. Yeah, um, he helped the Japanese occupy Korea, and as a result, uh, they gave him a uh, a, a mine. Yeah. I think it was some some kind of natural resource. Yeah. And um, this made him very, very wealthy so he could afford this fantastic mansion. And, and it goes from there. He has unlimited money. Yes, yes. And he's a very sick individual as well. Uh, Sometimes boogie. unlimited money makes you sick. Yeah. Well, case in point of what we're dealing with in the world today. Um, so um, basically what happens, there's three parts to this movie. And as you like, Jay, some of the pieces are not there in the first part. So you see this young woman in a poor from a poor family of pickpockets, right? And she's called to go by Count Fujiwara, who is a, we find out later, is a con man, to come to that mansion and be the handmaiden for Lady Hideko, who is the niece of... Uh, where is he? Uh, yeah, Uncle Kazuchi. Kazuchi, whatever. Uncle Kazuchi. And basically, as the show progresses, she comes in. She's sort of naive and young, and 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 um, you see her being very gentle with Lady Hideko, who is she's the handmaiden for, the servant for. And as the as this progresses. You know, they get they become closer and closer and closer, and there's a sort of maybe a um, a love relationship begins with between. Wait, them. before you before you rush off there, so yeah. Lady Hideko yeah. is um, wealthy. Hmm? Oh yeah, she's because, uh, she's the what the niece or something. She's the of, niece, right? Of Kouchi, and yeah. in her own right, she has tons of money. And exactly, could be precise. And uh, the handmaiden, who was the young girl. Yeah. Who is the, I guess it's Korean young girl. It, yes. It, the, the family itself is, is Japanese, but the, the handmaiden is, is Korean. Yes. She's actually a pickpocket. I don't know if you caught that. Yes. She's yes. a pickpocket. Yeah. And uh, she, you know, she was out of money. And so she took this job. Yeah. Um, and she, she was my favorite, by the way. She was so beautiful, this woman. 
Um, and, uh, you know, they think she's a quiet, demure handmaiden. She's actually a pickpocket. Exactly. And, and they're all doing deception. Every yes. one of them is doing this this kind of deception on the other ones. Yes. I mean, it is, the, nobody is safe from the deception. And, and Fujiwara, the, what does he call himself? The, the noble? The, yeah, the, Fuji, a con man, yeah. He's a con man, but he yeah. calls himself a, um, a nobility of some kind. Counts, yeah. Count, a count. It's, it's a made-up title. Exactly. Um, and he's uh, he's smooth. I just love the way he moves around. Yeah. Um, but meanwhile, he's trying to marry Hideko for her money. Exactly. And, he, and he tries to get um, the handmaiden. Um, what's her name now? Uh, uh, Suki or ta Tamako in Japanese. Uh, oh, the, ta ta yeah, Tanaka. The, act the actress is Kim Tairi. Yeah. Oh, she's really something. Yeah. So he tries to get the handmaiden yeah. um, to convince Hideko to marry him. Precisely. So it's a, yeah. it's a sort of making the match. Yeah. yeah. And th that, that's the way the plot starts. That, that's the simplest part of the plot. Yeah. Because then there are subplots upon subplots. Go ahead. So, okay. So basically, you've got the basics there, Jay. Right, so this this sort of progresses, and the, and in in the first part, you really they still think that the the pickpocket, the handmaiden, is going to be, you know, fooling Lady Hideko, so that she marries this con man, so called count, right, and so she uh, she's going to be put into a, into an into an insaneist. They're going to make it that she's crazy. And then she's going to go into it. Deco, they, yeah. They go, so, going to go into yeah, the it. The handmaiden is going to get some gift. I forget what it is. Some exactly. a lot of money. A lot uh, of money. for yeah. helping him. Yeah. But only after he's able to marry Hideko. Right. And, and when he does, then the handmaiden gets the money. Exactly. And Hideko winds up in a in a in an asylum. In an asylum. Um, and and he walks away. Fujiwara walks away with all the money. It's it's a, exactly. it's simple, but it's not simple. Because yeah. it, it, it's completely dynamic and fluid. Yes. <laughs> well, things change. Little by little, things change as these two women become affectionate with one another. And yet they still have their interests. You know, each one has their interests. And they, each one thinks that the other one is going to be fool. Oh, it, that each one thinks that, uh, I mean, the handmaiden still thinks she's going to get the money. And, and, and Hideko, Lady Hideko is going to be in an asylum. But then after 45 minutes or so, you go into part two. And part two starts showing things before part one. I mean, there's no consecutiveness this here. This is before. And then things start falling into place, right? That this whole thing with the handmaiden, this is a whole plot that the count, so-called Count Ujiwara and Lady Hideko have concocted to get this poor waif, right, handmaiden, and that she, they're going to trick it so that she ends up in the mental in, in, the, in, in, the, in the mental institution, and that Hideko and Fujiwara can s split whatever that you know they can both get away, you know. And Hideko, Lady Hideko wants to get away from her uncle, the sicko, right, psycho uncle, uncle Uzuki, right. Um, yeah. Yeah. yeah, and 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 basically, um, because he's such a sicko, she wants to get away from him. So she'll do anything because her her aunt, her mother's sister, her mother died in, in when she, in childbirth when she was born, and the mother's sister was there. But the uncle, the sick uncle, um, she wanted to run away from the sick uncle, so he tortured her, and and uh, in the in the basement. And then she hung herself because it, it, she went cuckoo. So, so she she's really unhappy with the uncle. Yes. Um, and uh, she has a side deal yeah. uh, with the count. And her side deal is that in, instead of uh, she knows about the plot between the uncle and the handmaiden. Right. So instead, they're going to undermine that plot. Exactly. And they're going to run away. They're going to actually get married. Yes. They're going to run away together and spend all her money and exactly. they're going to put the handmaiden in the asylum in a last minute switch and, and, and sort of bury the evidence in the asylum 
Let me, let me just stop for a minute and tell you about the production values. There wasn't a scene in this movie, and it's two hours plus, there wasn't a scene in this movie that wasn't beautiful. Yes, the people were beautiful. The the clothing so. they wore. He the count wore Western clothing. Uh, Kouchi wore, uh, I guess, traditional Japanese clothing. Yeah. Um, the the buildings. Every building was like it was just beautiful, mm -hmm. and they were beautiful. And the way the the camera framed the scenes, it was beautiful. There wasn't one frame in that whole movie that wasn't beautiful. Yes. Uh, it you know the 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 Japanese I'm sorry the Koreans really know know how to make a movie oh, and yes. this was uh, an extraordinary extraordinary art movie in that sense you couldn't take your eyes off it and then of course the action you had to watch it to carefully figure out you know what the plots were now from our rendition you know somebody listening watching our discussion here today they may say hey this is so complicated you know you need a you need a yellow pad. And, and a chart, figure out who's who's with who and who's against who and all that. Not really, not really, because the way they unfold it, like in that chapter two you mentioned, you begin to understand chapter one, and then all of a sudden the thing takes on a new dimension. And what becomes central is the relationship, you know, the the, the, the lesbian relationship between yeah. these two women, and how the handmaiden is actually the leader. She's the one who teaches Hideko about sex. Hideko is naive. He doesn't know what's going on. But what is, it's, it's all kind of um, a strange arrangement where the handmaiden says, you know, do you know what you want to do on your wedding night? No, I don't. I have no idea what to do. Let me teach you. Okay, and then we have these really smoldering scenes that are really, you know, they are more than soft pornography. They are full tilt pornography, yeah. um, and, and they're beautiful. Um, and you say, hmm, this, this is becoming the center of the movie because their relationship is secret and is, um, you know, being frustrated by all these plots around them. So query, are they going to be able to realize, to realize their, their love? Uh, and you don't know. And, and for me, I was answering, asking and answering that question for the rest of the movie. This is the romance between the two women. Uh, are they are they going to be able to carry this off or not? And when and when uh, okay, now you can talk about when they went to the asylum. The moment of truth, the the moment of truth at the asylum. We should have named our show this: the moment of truth at the asylum. What happens somehow when they get to the asylum? I, I don't remember exactly how, how they did this, but they sort of they were switching identities so basically the the handmaiden became lady hideko and and the people at the asylum grabs grab her to take her into the asylum and he and the real lady hideko is becomes free right she's free because because now they can say to the uncle you know hideko's in the, in the asylum right and they did a switch they did a the handmaiden who you know is is your natural favorite because she's so good looking exactly uh, is standing there ready to you know ready to run off with the count exactly leave, leave town with the count exactly. but no at the last minute um uh, the count says something to the uh the guys in the white suits exactly at the asylum right. and they go and they pick up the handmaiden and drag her in drag she's her no, in. No, the wrong one it's supposed to be her. She's the one who's nuts, not me. Exactly. That, that, that scene was pretty, pretty interesting too. Yeah, that that's exactly what what happened at the at the uh, at the. It's, now, part three is where you see this relationship between Lady Hideko and uh, Tamako, or what was her Korean name, Suki. No, all the Korean names, the, the surname is first. So uh, it would be Tae-ri Kim is Suki and Min Hee Kim is Lady Hideko. Okay. So you could, and, and, and bottom line is you start in, in you oh, see. And by the way, that both languages are working in this movie. Yes, yes. This is, in fact, three languages. There's some English, there's some, there's some Japanese, there's some, uh, there's some Korean, and they're switching back and forth. 
The yeah. best you can do is turn on the, the titles and try to follow it. Exactly. But, uh, it's, it's a complete mixture of three languages. Yeah, yeah I, would, I mean, basically, yeah, you have to look at the titles to understand the dialogue between them. So, so basically, part three is where these two pretty much decide that they want to be together, right? Um, oh, the handmaiden is 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 one of her friends was able to start a fire there at the at the at the institution, and in the chaos, she's able to escape, right? So she escapes, and and then the two of them get together. Uh, the, the 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 lady Hideko and and Tamako, right? They get together, and they concoct. Now, because the pickpocket had a lot of criminal um, learning, had to be criminal criminal. She's able to forge Lady Hideko's passport to make her into a man, right? So so they they put a mustache on her, you know, and make her into a man, and then they're able to get through customs, right? And get through out of out of Korea, and then they get on a boat. And I don't remember where the boat was going, but they're able to, to escape. Probably going to Japan. Yeah, but yeah. Um, or, you know, somewhere else in Asia. Yeah. What what, what uh, was striking about that is that um, uh, she it was a plan. The fire was a plan. That was her way of escaping. Exactly. Uh, and Kouchi, I hope I have his name right. The yeah. uncle. Kozuki. Kazuki. He, he he began to search for them. He wanted he wanted to uh, get hold of them. He wanted to have them arrested, and he was very powerful. Right. Uh, he wanted to bring them back. He was angry because they, you know, they had run away together, and um, and that's why the phony passport, because he was looking for them. His agents were all over town trying to find them, so they they had they knew they had to. Uh, disguise themselves to get out of town, and, and they, they successfully did that. And you, sh they show them on the boat when the lady Hideko takes off the mustache, you know, and the two are in love. And then the 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 the, the uncle is able to find Count Fujiwara, who has an escape, right? And his agents go and and find him and bring him back. And then he puts the count in the torque because he's upset at what happened. In, the, in his torture chamber in the basement where he had tortured Hideko's aunt who commits suicide later. And, and, um, and he's, this is the part of the movie I don't really like, you know, and I, we've gotten into this before. I don't like all this blood and gore. And he's it was, with his book. Well, he, had, he had talked about, quote, the basement, end quote. Yes. Uh, throughout the movie. And, you know, everybody was terrified of the basement and, uh, he threatened the basement on a number of people, and you didn't know what was going on in the basement. What was so threatening about the basement? Finally, he gets uh, Fujiwara in the basement, and you begin to understand, because he's got torture and uh, horrible devices down there, and uh, he's ticked off at Fujiwara for all the, for the I, I'm, I'm not sure, why, I guess the failure of the marriage. Exactly. The failure of the marriage. The and uh, he he's uh, interrogating Fujiwara. He's torturing him. He's maiming him. Uh, and it was very uncomfortable because he used a big paper cutter to cut Fujiwara's fingers off. Exactly. Uh, and more. And, and he did other things to him too. I don't remember what they were. He they were hard, hard to hard to wrap your mind around. So, but it was a torture chamber. Right. Now, and, Fuji uh, go ahead. Fujiwara had initially given Hideko, I think a vial with opium that if you take too much of it, you'll die. So if your uncle ever gets you in that basement, take this and you'll die. You won't give him the satisfaction of tormenting you, torturing you, you'll pass on. So as Fujiwara is in the basement, he's pretty sharp and he's, he's undergoing horrible torture, right? And maiming his finger cut off. He keeps, and, and this sicko, the uncle, who's into all kind of porn, sicko, kinky pornographic shit, right? Uh, keeps asking him things about, about his niece, about what kind of sex he had with the niece, right? And in reality, they didn't have any sex because she masturbated and then she cut her hand. It was an, un, it was an unconsummated marriage. Exactly. They were married, 
but yes. it was never consummated. Exactly. Um, she she didn't want to consummate it, and I guess he didn't either. Yeah. It was only for the money. Each one of them thought that they would benefit in the money. So there was no real there was no real marriage, just a formal marriage. Yeah, and she cut her hand to simulate. You know, she, uh, and she did masturbation. You know, this is and, and to to and so that the other servants would hear her, you know, moaning or whatever. And then she cut her hand to show them on the sheets that there was blood on the sheets, you know, because she was a virgin and, a virgin and she had sex with her husband. So, so, uh, but that was all, as you said, it was all simulated. It wasn't a, the reality. So, so getting back to Count Fujiwara, he was yeah, back, pretty, back to the basement, back to the basement. He was pretty sharp and he keeps asking the uncle for another cig. He wants to get into his cigarettes and smoke his cigarettes. So he keeps asking for another cigarette, wanted more and more cigarettes. And then he says to, to the to the uncle, or he says to him, talks to himself and says, there's no windows here. So as he's getting the fifth or sixth cigarette, the cigarettes were laced with mercury, right? And as he's smoking, it fills that 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 basement room and they both die, right? It, he kills himself, but he also kills the, the evil uncle. And and that's pretty much pretty shopping, shocking, you know, scene, you know, where he's he really knows that his his he knows what to do, you know, with the with first with the uh, vial he was giving Hideko and then with the mercury. So 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 that was pretty sharp thing. But yeah. there's yeah. one other thing that we, we haven't touched on. Yeah. And that is uh, in all this flashback, yeah, um, we, we find that uh, Hideko. But the uncle trained Hideko to read pornography. Exactly, yeah. From a very young age, from like five five years old. Yeah. And she was a professional pornography reader. Exactly. Which she, she resented greatly. Uh, and there was a room uh, in this uh, fantastic mansion where she would read to his friends, and they would come over in black tie and apparently pay him a lot of money to see her reading the pornography. All she was doing is reading the pornography. Exactly. Um, but um, it was very weird. And uh, that's kind of how she grew up. Yeah. Well, um, the handmaiden didn't know. And one day she found out that this whole big library affair was a library of, of uh, Asian pornography, of Japanese, Korean pornography. And, it offended her because she was, you know, she was the lover of Hideko, and she found Hideko was was flawed in her, um, you know, upbringing in pornography. So she began to destroy the library by kicking the books, um, tearing them off the shelves, and there were a lot of them, a whole huge library, stacks after stacks after stacks of this pornography. And she kicked them into a, a kind of a pond under the floor and destroying them. Um, and this is what made uh, Kouchi so angry because his lifetime collection of pornography had been destroyed. That's why he was so ticked off at uh, Fujiwara. Yeah, because and, and Hideko was also helping her, your lady Hideko, to destroy all that. And one of the things... When they had that room with the reading, Count Fujiwara was one of the men sitting there, right? And this is how he sort of decided that he was going to get Lady Hideko out of this by, you know, proposing to her a deal to get her out of that where she was unhappy being, you know, what her uncle was doing. So, so he was one of those guys sitting there listening to the pornography, you know, that that um, that she was reading, you know, the so. Well, it does hang together. What I mean is the timeline and the flashbacks. Everything. And the, and the you know, you have to, you have obviously you have to watch it and you have to make mental note of where they've been and where they're going and, exactly. and how the relationships are changing and what is being revealed about their scheming and plotting and what have you. But at the end, it all makes sense somehow. You have these two women who are lovers. You have Fujiwara, who is a con man and, he gets his, and you have Kouchi, who is, uh, you know, a nutcase, and he gets his, and um, and the collection is destroyed, and they escape, is the point. 
they are escaping from this very bizarre world, very rich, bizarre world, uh, at a time in the 30s when there was a lot of bizarreties going on. You know, um, there was some kind of diplomatic agreement back in the 1860s um, between Japan and Korea that allowed, um, uh, I guess, Co Japan to occupy Korea to make it part of the imperial empire. And uh, <clears throat> this was uh, a continuation of that. Uh, you know, it, things were not all quiet in Asia in that period. You had the Russo, uh, was it the Russo-Japanese War, 1905. And uh, as, as time went by, um, historically, Japan took greater and greater uh, control of Korea. And this was part of that. And um, you know, I think the the whole thing in Korea was controlled by a Japanese imperialists, and this was before the war. It was an example of J Japanese imperialism into Korea. So you know, we hear about uh, the the comfort women during the war and all the atrocities the Japanese uh, visited on the Koreans. Oh, it started a long time before the war. It was going on. This was this was an example of a of a, a society in flux, of a society that we didn't know which way it was going, and of a, a blending of the cultures that was, I don't know what to say, imperfect. Um, so um, you have to look at it from the historical point of view and see you know, that there's this engagement between the Japanese culture and the Korean culture, in the Japanese business, Korean business, between, you know, um, Japanese art, and pornography, and Korean art and pornography. Uh, but, and, and this love affair was between a Japanese um, royalty, I guess, Neko, uh, and this Korean handmaiden. And that was also an example of the blending of the cultures in the 30s. Um, that was happening. And, you know, you really have to know the history of their national, you know, engagement to know the implications of what was going on in this movie. And Jay, the Japanese royal family, biologically, are Korean. Mm -hmm. They're not Japanese. They're from originally from Korea. So that is not really well known by a lot of people, that that, that royal family genetically is Korean. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's another factor that plays into all this, right? Um, and, and, and the book on which this is all based. This is so interesting. It knocks your socks off. The book um, was by a Welsh writer by exactly. the name of Sarah Waters. Exactly. Uh, and it was a novel written in 2002, yeah. and it was called Fingersmith. Yeah. And you really have to, you have. To, I haven't read the book, but you have to guess that that has to do with the, the finger maiming that went on in the in the basement. Exactly. Uh, this, this, old, this old guy was... Um, into fingers. <laughs> now I, I can say that those those scenes between the the love scenes between the two women, very sensitively done. Um, what was his name? The uh, something Park Wu, the the director. Yeah, Park Park Chan Wu. Wu. Chan -Wu. Park Chan Wu. He yeah. really he's really a very good director because those scenes were done so sensitively that it you know it's like soft core pornography or even more, but it's it's just done so beautifully. I mean, it's not done in a in a vulgar way. No, so, no it was love. It was it was, was portraying love. Yeah, and he he yeah. really you know he, he's just excellent directing. You know, just absolutely yeah, excellent directing. And that whole movie, as you said, the scenes, the mansion, the gardens, uh, the clothing of Count Fujiwara, everything is so well done. You know, it's all well done. So really. Very well done movie. Well, the thing is, um, you know, it's it's uh, attention to detail. Yeah, that's why uh, I think it won some awards. Oh yeah, it won the uh, British uh, Academy of Film Awards. Uh, right, right. For the best the movie, yeah. best film not in the English language. Exactly. It was also in the Cannes Film Festival. Exactly. Um, it, it, and it made money too. Yeah. Probably because it'll, of the soft. Made a lot of money, but. Um, the the point I make is that the attention to detail was extraordinary. Yeah. Uh, the, the cultural detail, the 
uh, the costumes, uh, the garden, you talked about the gardens. They were unbelievable. And the home, the, the mansion was unbelievable. Even their time on the ship, if you remember. I don't know how they got that footage. Unbelievable. Yeah. Uh, it's not yeah. only inside, the inside spaces. You know, but it was the outside spaces, too. There was, there was a street scene where they met in the back alley after she escaped from the asylum. So, you know, I said to myself, this this is the 1930s. Um, you know, in Korea, in some village in Korea, this is it. They managed to capture exactly how that would look. So, you know, it's like great art is is really attention to detail. And and that's what this director did. By the way, he was also one of the writers. There were two writers, and uh, he was one of the writers. But the screenplay, uh, yeah. I mean, that, yeah, the screenplay, right. Right, right, right. Yeah. So, yeah, okay, we learned a lot from this movie. We we, I mean, I don't know about you, but I was transported yes. into that time. And I was transported into the complexity of this weird family, you know, combination of things, combination exactly. of, of uh, uh, deceptions. And I um, said to myself, um, it, at first it seemed so millions of miles away from our lives here in Hawaii. But then I, I said, no, no, it's just, it's humanity. It's just in a in a strange time in the history of of that of that clash of cultures, um, and you you begin to understand what was going on, and and believe that it could happen. Of course, it's just a novel, so we learned, George. Right? We learned from this movie. What was your essential lesson from this movie? Well, basically. You learn that things are not always what they seem on the surface, right? And that in some ways good, you know, wins in the end, you know, because all these evil people <laughs> get, get killed and the victims, you know, uh, the two victims of beautiful women, both both beautiful women. Remind me of a former girlfriend with an almond American woman I was dating. Um, so, I mean, it, it's just, um, it, it, it's just that, as I said, good wins, right? And and um, that that's pretty much. Yeah, I wonder. I wonder where the. You know, I like to read the book. I wonder where that that boat took them. Yeah. That boat was going somewhere far away. Exactly. Where was it going, and what what were they going to do after that? And who knows? Mind where... you, this is the '30s, and um, you know we we're about to have a, a world war not too long after. I wonder. Where the writer, the, the writer of the novel, anyway, would, yeah. would take them after that. Yeah, it's it's just. Um, so you, I always mentioned wanted... that you were, you know, disturbed um, by the by the by the violence in in the basement and yeah. the, the uh, I, I don't know if I would call it um, cabalistic. I mean, it was it, it was sort of necessary to the plot. It gave weight to the plot. It showed you what the uncle was really like. You didn't know how what kind of a madman he was, yeah. and it showed you that Fujiwara was, uh, you know, sort of a pathetic on man figure with no real substance. It showed you that. So maybe there was a purpose within the plot to to do that that torture. But um, I know you didn't like it, and it made me nervous too. And that would affect your um, that would affect your rating on the movie. Exactly. Precisely. So with all that we have talked about, what is your rating on the movie? I still think it's a nine and a half. I still think this movie is phenomenal in every way. Uh, the scenes, the directing, the, the acting, superb acting. The only thing, as I as you as you mentioned, is is I don't in a broader perspective, which we've discussed before. I think that not only Hollywood, but all these movie producers around the world have really got to lessen all this blood and gore because it's it's really impacting the minds of some very, very sick people. So I'll give it a nine and a half with that, um, you know, thing that the only reason is not going to be a 10 is because of that last scene that I didn't like. Mm, yeah. I'm really tossed about it. Uh, I, I totally agree with you. We we don't need that kind of violence. Um, on the other hand, you walk away from this movie, that's what you remember. You remember the, the soft porn with the two women? 
Yeah. And remember how absolutely beautiful they are. They never smile, by the way. Never smile. They're so dead serious. Nobody smiles. Nobody in the movie smiles. It's interesting. Um, and it leaves an impression on you. So I don't know. I think I, I come down with, I give it more for the production values. I give it more for the memorable story and memorable connection with what was going on in the world. You know, I give it less for the violence, which is questionable in terms of whether you need to have that for the to achieve the, the values. But I, I, I come down with a plus and a minus, and I'm right in the same same camp, George, 9.5. That's where I am. I wouldn't give it a 10. And I wouldn't give it a 9 either, but I'd give it a 9.5. And I'd say that the big lesson for me was that um, we need to be transported. We in our lives need to have the life experience of watching other people far away, you know, geographically and in time. And and we need to look, we need movie producers and writers that will take us there, that will give us a, a glimpse of another world that expands our own consciousness. And I look forward to more movies like this one for that purpose. You know? Definitely. I mean, what left me at that face of uh, uh, Lady Hideko for days I, I kept seeing that beautiful face. I couldn't get it out of my mind. We come. I would be eating, and we'd come in. So, so that even left more of a, a thing with me than than the bad scene in the basement with uh, cutting off the fingers. I sort of blocked that out and and only looked at the beautiful parts of this movie. So, a good movie. I would suggest anybody to to, to watch it, and. Uh, and even that soft porn is beautiful, the way it's done. So yeah. good movie. Excellent yeah. movie. Yeah. 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 I, I was uh, starting to look through the newspapers if there are any ads for handmaidens who would like to get a job, but I don't think there are any. Not, Not like me. that. Not like that. Not in this day and age. <laughs> George Kaysen, learning from the movies, movies we can learn from the handmaiden. Thank you. I'll see you again soon, George. Thank Aloha. you, Jay. We'll see you again soon. Two weeks. Aloha. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.